Yo, 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 what's going on, man? It's your boy, Darnell Smith, representing the Players Company. I'm here with the founder of the Players Company, my brother, Sheldon Day. And we are here to talk about the NFL 2023 draft. Super exciting weekend, my guy. A lot of big news. And uh, I can't wait to dive into it, man. How you feeling, though? Man, I'm feeling good, man. Oh, it's crazy that I got drafted eight years ago now. That's man. crazy. I, I done been through seven drafts, man. Like, living through it, thriving, flourishing, man. Just... Happy to still be playing the game I love, man. But, man, really excited to dive deep into this. Man, just give our our perspectives on things, man. Just really looking forward to it. Not for sure, man. You mentioned being in the league for, you know, going to your eighth season. Like, at what point in the league do they start referring to you as, like, as like the OG or, or the vet? <laughs> is, is it year four? Is it year five? Because you're still young. You ain't even 30 yet in, like, real yeah. life. But in the locker room, you dang near, you, you, you kind of, you an OG now. Man, so I got caught a dinosaur this year, which is the <laughs> first time ever. But, I mean, I think in that transition between year six and seven, you start to see the guys get younger. You start to see uh, the turnover of locker rooms and things like that. So I would say around that six, seven range. But if you make it to eight, nine, ten, it's like, dang, man, like the young guys, like, what are you doing here? It's like seeing like a six, a six year senior and you're a freshman in college. So it's like, right. man, like, go do something else. Like, what you still doing here? So it's a cool experience. But. As a, like as my time is increasing, it's just crazy to see how things have changed. I'm playing with people that weren't born in the '90s anymore; they were born man. in 2000, which is just blowing my mind. That is wild, man. You you playing with guys who ain't never heard of Keenan and Kale. They ain't <laughs> never heard of like you know what I mean, <laughs> like some of the original cartoons. So I'm sure that's a yeah. weird experience, but it's keeping you young. And I'm glad you mentioned you know the vet being a veteran uh, and getting drafted eight years ago because we actually did a cool thing. Uh, this weekend, we're able to collect and gather some of y your friends in the league and just some veterans who played in the league, uh, kind of get get their stories and their input on their draft day experiences. And uh, definitely want, want to be able to share that with our fans right now watching on Caffeine. Make sure, uh, again, before we even talk to that, that you're sharing this stream, dropping this stream in your group chat, telling your friends, your mama, your cousin, everybody, man, because we're about to really dive deep into the draft. But like I said, we did really good uh, project here. Got some good content hearing these stories from some of the OGs, man. So check this out. My draft day experience was quite crazy. You know, I thought I was going in the first two days. Um, you know, when I got drafted, the first day was just the first round, which was tough, you know. But the second day I woke up like, ooh, I knew it. Had a good breakfast. You know, I felt juiced. Um, didn't get my name called that day. And I uh, woke up the third day kind of, you know, still as juiced, like, let's go. You know, because you don't know any different. You just want your name called. And luckily, I was the second pick of the fifth round. I was so ecstatic. Uh, my family got to see my name go across that screen. I got to see all my hard work come to fruition. And uh, I was able just to understand that I get an opportunity to go out there and go on the team and try to make it. So it was quite a blessing. You know, to all you guys going through it now, good luck. Uh, the morning of the draft, I'm with my guy, Jerome Harrison, who got drafted in the same draft. In the fifth round by the Cleveland Browns, he asked me a question. He said, Greg, what's the one place you don't want to end up? I say, Green Bay, clearly. Is I don't like the colors. I don't want to play in the cold. I don't care for Brett Favre, the whole nine. I'm a Michigan boy. And so fast forward to the draft. The Green Bay Packers trade away Javon Walker to the Denver Broncos. I'm like, okay, Green Bay has a vacancy at receiver. They have the 50th pick. They select Darren College, a guard. I'm like, whoo, I dodged that bullet. I look back down at the ticker and I see they got the 52nd pick and I'm like, oh. sure enough, my phone rings. They say, you ready to be a Packer? I look like, absolutely can't wait. I'm excited, been waiting for this moment. All that to say, you don't know where you're gonna end up. So keep all options open and understand that it all works out in the end. Enjoy draft day. My draft experience, <laughs> crazy, it's been eight years. Uh, watching day one and man, I heard Sheldon. I think it was the Saints pick, 13th pick or something like that. I heard Sheldon. I'm like, oh snaps, did I just get drafted? But it was Sheldon Rankin. So that was like a, a, a uptick for me. And I'm like, dang, I just got drafted to the Saints, blah, blah, I'm about to, man, I'm be in New Orleans, I'm gonna be at the boot, blah, blah. But in actuality, it was Sheldon Rankin. So that was a, a cool little story for me for day one. I did not get drafted that day. But uh, the funniest moment, which it, was, it wasn't funny then, but now funny, uh, my nephew walked out of my aunt's house and said, man, we leaving. We know you ain't getting drafted. I said, dang. He's a, he's a young bull at that time, but just looking back on it, it's funny. 
But just like in that moment, I was like, dang, am I a disappointment? Am I a disappointment that I didn't get drafted when I thought I was? So that put a little chip on my shoulder and it's like, dang, okay, when if my name get called, if it doesn't get called, I'm gonna go in this thing and give it everything I got. So day three rolls around. Uh, man, uh, went out the night before. I was like, damn, man, I didn't get drafted. What are we celebrating? Yada, yada, this, yada, yada, that. Next thing you know, I wake up the next morning. Jacksonville Jaguars call me, make me the 104th pick or 103rd pick, something like that, of the fourth round. Man, shout out to the Jacksonville Jaguars for giving this young kid out of Indianapolis a chance to live out his lifelong dream, man. Yo, what's good? This is Eric Armstead of the San Francisco 49ers. And with the draft coming up, it's bringing back a lot of memories of my draft experience. Surrounded by family in Sacramento. I didn't end up going to the draft. And, uh, you know, didn't really know I was gonna go, but that was the day my life changed. Um, I know there was two teams in the mix, really, that, I, you know, really, showed a lot of interest in me, and that was the San Diego Chargers and the 49ers. And uh, my agent expressed to me that if I made it to the 49ers, um, who were picking at pick 16, that that's where I would go. Um, there ended up being a trade. The day of the draft was a little confusion, but the Niners ended up drafting me and it changed my life was able to stay home um, an hour and a half away from where I grew up and play for the hometown team. And uh, it's been a blessing going on nine years with them and uh, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Uh, shout out to all the guys um, who are gonna get drafted uh, this weekend and uh, good luck on your NFL career. Hey, this is Harrison Phillips, defensive tackle with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, my draft day in 2018, I got drafted to the Buffalo Bills in the third round. And uh, I think I like to think about the draft is there's really only one person in the NFL draft that's happy with where they're drafted, and that's the first overall pick. Everyone else says they deserve to be higher. Uh, my experience, I did think I was going to go um, maybe a round earlier or, or a handful of picks earlier, but um, when I saw Buffalo coming along on the bottom of the ticker, um, I kind of thought that that's maybe where I would end up, and I had a great first four years there. How you would, everybody? This is David Bell from the Cleveland Browns. I was drafted in the third round, 99th pick. Uh, that moment was just so unreal, you feel me? Uh, just the anticipation of getting that phone call and the excitement once I got that phone call. And then once I looked up and seen everybody else's excitement, it was just uh, a crazy experience and a dream that came true. But I understood that that was just the start of it. So good luck to y'all boys uh, for day two and day three. And congrats to all the boys who got drafted in day one. I never got a chance to see my name go across the ticker or see anybody come across the stage and call my name out. But what the Packers did for me is uh, after uh, they called me, let me know they were going to draft me. They put the phone to the TV and I could hear my name get called. Um, I didn't get a chance to see it, but I got a chance to hear it. And, and then the dream started and the, uh, everything else from there was just unbelievable. Hey, everyone. It's Solomon Thomas, defensive tackle for the New York Jets. Um, here talking about a draft memory. Um, you know, I went to the draft in 2017, we're in Philly. I'm at the table, my agent thought that, you know, I was probably gonna go seven to the Chargers. Um, and so, you know, that's probably about an hour and 20 minutes of some change. So I had some time to chill. Um, I was about to go get some uh, food from the uh, snack bar uh, with my friends. They said the barbecue was fire and we're from Texas, so I had to go try it out. I um, was about to get up and then uh, my phone rang and it was uh, John Lynch and the 49ers. And uh, forever changed my life, forever grateful, forever a lover of the Niners. Um, but yeah, draft night was a special night for the rest of my life. My draft day experience was unforgettable. Um, as the rounds were going by and I hadn't got picked up yet, I started to come to the realization that I may not get drafted. And I went into the backyard and I just started running gases just to get my mind off the whole thing. And I came in, I took a shower, and in the shower I was praying. And when I got out the shower, that's when I got the phone call. And it just felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Like all my life I had been working for this and I saw my name come across the screen. Uh, round five, pick 166. I'll never forget, man, dream come true. Man, 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 that was so dope, bro. Uh, hearing your story specifically, man, cause I was, I was, I was there and I know it, yeah. it was, it was kind of tense. Like, you know, that, that, that day one, you mentioned having a draft day party. It was, 
it was it was fun. It's a lot lot of people, your family, your friends, but at the same time, it was like, man, like you didn't hear your name, and I just felt like the energy was kind of shifted. People was looking at you, and I. I, I, you know, me as like your brother, I'm naturally protective of you. So I'm just like, man, like leave him alone. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure you would probably, you you, you do a good job of staying uh, even killed, but I'm sure inside you probably like, dang, like got all these people here. And like my agent told me this and like, did, you know, didn't get drafted, but you know, man, God don't make mistakes. And you ended up getting drafted that next day. And, mm-hmm. and we definitely had, had a ball turned up, you know what I mean? And uh, man, it's crazy. Just, it feels like it was yesterday. You know what I'm saying? It really does. And like just kind of reliving that moment, doing that uh that little snippet, it was just cool to see like I wasn't the only one who was told something and then something else happened. So it's a lot of stories out there. So it was a cool thing to kind of put this together and really show like, okay, like I thought I was going second round. I thought I was going third round based off of what somebody else said. You could do all the th- right things and it still not work out in your favor. But like you said, God don't make mistakes and I'm just happy to still be thriving and kicking it. So yeah. Can't complain. <laughs> can't complain at all man another one of the stories i thought was interesting was a uh, greg jennings man shout out to uh, greg my og he said uh going into the draft his homeboy asked him is there any team that you just don't want to get drafted to he said man it's the green bay packers i don't, I don't like he said i don't really rock with Brett Favre like that i don't like their colors and he ends up being a, a green bay packer legend you know what yeah. i mean a hell of a career in green bay so it's just funny how things work out and you know your mindset as a you know, 20, 21 year old versus, you know, now and looking back, things like that. So, man, man, it's just cool to hear those stories and get that exclusive footage. And you won't get that anywhere but the Players Company. So make sure y'all following us on Caffeine, Instagram, our Facebook page is The Players Company, TPC. Same thing with the YouTube channel. We're putting out exclusive content everywhere. So make sure y'all tuning in. Uh, But like we said from the beginning, we got to talk about 2023 draft. A lot of big moves happen. And let's start with, like, the first 10 picks, man. So, obviously, Carolina Panthers, number one pick. They went with Bryce Young, quarterback from Alabama. Yeah. I think pretty much everybody knew that this, this was going to happen. Uh, You know, he's a Heisman winner. He was a hell of a career at Alabama, man. Like, probably the best quarterback in, in college the last couple of years. Very efficient, mm-hmm. smart, playing underneath, you know, Nick Saban. Were you surprised at all to, to see the Panthers pick him up? Or are you pretty much like, was it a gimme? I'm not gonna lie, I was surprised. I, if I'm a GM, I'm picking CJ Stroud. Uh, Ooh. Reason being, uh, I feel like he's more polished. Uh, I feel like uh, he did everything you could at Ohio State. He played in the big games. He uh, delivered the ball well. I feel like he had healthy seasons and things like that. But also, I know that he was surrounded uh, by some top tier athletes. So Dogs. he played some great <laughs> receivers. So it's like, okay, if you can kind of uh, replicate that system with Frank Wright being your head coach and your play caller. He had a lot of success in Philly. He had some success early on in Indianapolis. So if you can go repeat that, I think that would have been the best pick, especially because of his stature and things like that. Bryce Young, uh, obviously, you got to deep in the pocket so he can see little things that most people don't think of. And now you got to move the pocket, things like that. So it'll be interesting to see how he does year one and year two. Now, that's a good point, man. And that's really been the the only knock, honestly, on Bryce Young to this point was his size. You know, they're saying he's probably going to play at like 195 soaking wet. You know what I mean? People who, who've seen him in person said he's pretty small. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, though, in his defense, we've seen some small quarterbacks have some success in the league, you know, in different ways. Like, Drew Brees wasn't that big, you know what I'm saying? And he obviously had a Hall of Fame caliber career. Um, right. Kyler Murray was hurt last year, but we've seen Kyler Murray have an MVP caliber type of season the year prior. So I think that there's some things you can do where you can throw out, you know, moving outside the pocket, you can move it around, some play action, things like that. And, um, and my argument for that, too, bro, is obviously the NFL is better players. But he played in the SEC. So a lot of times people say, oh, can he see o- over his line? The line is too big. Them, them Bama linemen was damn near just as big as the NFL linemen. So if he could throw in the pocket in college, I think he could throw in the pocket in the NFL. But I could be, I mean, am I wrong by, by, by saying that opinion? Uh, I feel like it's a little different. I feel like it's a little different. Like uh, colleges, the hashes aren't as big. So it's like uh, you don't got to see like that B gap isn't as wide. Most uh, SEC linemen or power rushers think like that on the inside. So you got a natural step up lane, things like that, that mm. now you get to the NFL, people know how to rush, people know how to attack schemes and things like that. So uh, it comes a little faster. So yeah. I'm really interested to see. Uh, I mean, they got Taylor Moten playing tackle for them out there. He's six. Yeah. You got uh, Maxion. Go- <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You got <laughs> guys that say uh, that's six, five and he's five, 11. So it's mm-hmm. like, how deep can you go? So I know that was Kyler Murray's problem too. Uh, mm-hmm. They say, oh, Oklahoma has big offensive tackles, but he can still see in those B gaps because his guards is six foot, six foot two. 
right, now when right. you guard a six foot five and they three thirty, it's a little different seeing behind them, in front of them, to the side of them, things like that. So that's why I say they got to move the pocket. That's a good point, man. We shall see, man. He's a, he's a really great career, like we said, smart player. So I think he'll figure it out. Will it happen in year one? I don't know, but I think that's that's a good pick for the Panthers. But you did mention my favorite quarterback in the draft, C.J. Stroud, and he went number two to the Houston, Texas. D- D'Amico Ryan's making big moves, man, as, as the head yeah. coach there. I'm not going to lie. I I think C.J.'s going to be the best quarterback from this draft for a lot of the same reasons that, that you said, man, just from uh-huh. a standpoint of – um, the big game. I mean, I know they lost against Georgia this past year, but I mean, man, Georgia is loaded with NFL talent and CJ Stroud balled out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? At a very high level. You look at the stat line, amazing stat line. He's mobile, but he always keeps his eyes down the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, his size, you know, decent size. So like he just has like a, when I look at him, like, I don't know what he's missing. I, I, I think sometimes he's not the most accurate all the time, but actually he's not bad. So it's like, man, like, I don't know. I, I think that's a hell of a pick from the Texans. I think I think the Texans kind of uh, flip the trajectory of their organization for sure, especially Ooh. them trading for the number three pick too. So it's like Will okay, Anderson, yes, we, we starting uh, with the number two. We go get our quarterback, our franchise quarterback secured. Yeah, and we can do that with C.J. Stroud. Like I said, he's the most polished quarterback to me. But I'm a, I'm gonna go against you and say he's not the most, or he won't be the best out of this class. We go talk about that a little later. Okay, but I think okay. C.J. the most polished. Um, he gives them a, a winning chance right now in a division that's trying to figure out who's going to be the dominant one uh, for the next four or five years. Yep. You got the Jacksonville Jaguars making a splash. You got the Colts who's trying to make a splash. And you got the Tennessee Titans rebuilding right now. So I think that that conference is up and we're going to see who kind of comes up. Yeah, man. You mentioned the Texans making a big move, getting the trading up uh, with, I believe, the, uh, the Cardinals, if I'm not mistaken, to get that number three pick. They get Will Anderson Jr., I mean, from Alabama, this guy's a, everything I heard about him, good leader, physical on tape, smart player, lo- just loves playing football. I feel like he's a D'Amico Ryan's type of guy. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, I agree with you. I, I mean, they're making, they made some big moves in this draft. They're trying to find a way to win now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And even though Texas, you know, didn't have a great season last year, I feel like if you watch the game, they played really hard though. Like it yeah. wasn't like they just, you know, getting their, their ass kicked. They were out there playing hard making games competitive. So these type of pieces, you know what I mean, can really change the, the trajectory of a franchise quick, especially in the AFC South. That's like you said, they're trying to figure things out. Like who's going to be the king? Who's going to be the dominant? Right now it's looking like the Jags on paper probably be the one that's at the number one spot, but you never know. It's definitely a, a up for grabs. So big time moves by, by the Texas, man. But we got to get to number four pick. You know, I'm a coach fan. We're both from yeah. Indianapolis. I know you can't be a fan of coach because you still active, but I'm a fan of the coach. We get Anthony Richardson, man. And listen, I'm not going to lie. I wanted C.J. Stroud as a Colts fan. That's who I wanted. But with Stroud being off the table, I do think the next best option at quarterback was Anthony Richardson. Um, Now, you look at his stat line in college, it's not super impressive. I'll I'll admit it. But you look at his size, his athleticism, his strength, his combine numbers were ridiculous. I just think that, man, like, he has a very, very, very high upside. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's either going to be just – like an okay player, or he gonna be like a, a a superstar. I don't think there's nothing in between. So I think if I if I'm a franchise, I'm trying to change the trajectory of my franchise. I'm gonna go with a guy. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna roll the dice, and I'm gonna go with a guy who I think could potentially go out there and, and, and change my franchise. Not to mention our new head coach is Shane Steichen, who was the offensive coordinator with the Tennessee Titans, and he played a huge role in getting Jalen Hurts rolling last year and becoming MVP caliber type of player. You know, they share some similar characteristics, mobile, size, and strong. I like to pick considering all things, but I want to hear your opinion. So this is my favorite quarterback, my favorite quarterback out the entire draft. What? Yeah, so, uh, man, I personally like the big play ability. Um, mm-hmm. He can always extend plays. Like you said, Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles, them uh, being able Shane to Steichen, move, yeah. move the pocket, be able to – uh, do fake play action. Now you have to respect the entire game. And yep. usually when you have a quarterback that they used to have, he would sit back in the pocket. Then you can kind of tee off. You weren't really worried about him running. And now you add 11 player on the field at all times. So I think that that changes the dynamic for them and just the ability for him to get out of it and then throw a deep ball. So I definitely feel like he can have a Deshaun Watson early on type of career mm. that can lead into Patrick Mahomes when Deshaun, has, when Deshaun Watson had Will Fuller, D-Hop, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. I can see 
D Hop being able to be replicated by Michael Pittman Jr., Alex, Alex Pierce, and then they just got Josh Downs. So I, I know they they putting something together, and it's just like I think that was the perfect gel that they were missing. And now you don't you don't have to have the best O line in football because you got a mobile quarterback, things like that. So I think they definitely uh they definitely won the, the day one in my opinion. Love it, bro. That that's a bold statement, man. Your favorite quarterback in a draft because there's a lot of haters out there on Anthony Richardson. Yeah. So uh, for you being an active player and saying that, man, like I, I believe you. I'm, I'm gonna listen to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna lean on your expertise, man. And man, I think the sky's the limit. And just seeing his reaction, him talking to like his uh his little brother. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. Like after he got drafted, his little brother had a really nice just uh this little speech that he wanted to say to honor his brother and Anthony was all teared up. You could see the emotion. You could tell how much this means to him. And I can tell he's the type of guy that's going to go in ready to work and, and mm -hmm. give it his all. And that's really all you can ask for. At the end of the day, there's just no guarantees in the league. You never know what's going to happen. But at least, you know, I know this is a guy who cares. He's going to give it his all. You know, the, the, the coach fans in that, but they're going to back him. You know, we've been spoiled. We were spoiled our whole life. We, we grew up with Peyton Manning, one of the top five greatest quarterbacks of all time. Then we get Andrew Luck who was going to be a Hall of Famer if his, his career didn't get cut short. And then from there, we kind of just been figuring things out. So now it's like, all right, we got a, a young guy, number four pick, and hopefully he can make some things happen. Not to mention, you got one of the best running backs behind him in Jonathan Taylor. So I'm thinking a lot of this RPO, you know what I'm saying? And you miss also Josh Downs, who they got later uh, in the draft. And it's crazy. I remember me and you were texting or talking the other day, and you were saying that the coach need to get a speed to receiver. And yep. that's exactly what they did with their next pick. So it's like, man, like – they made some big, big moves, bro. So as a coach fan, I'm excited. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to have too many crazy expectations for next year. He's still a rookie, but I like the future, man. Not to mention, we got Juju Brents. Mm. Come on now. Naptown native. Oh, went to geez, Kansas, went to Iowa, Trevor to Kansas State. Went to all high school, the best high school in the country, Warren Central, Dub C. Bro, like to get drafted by your hometown team in the second round, that got to feel good, right? I mean, some people can't handle it, but I mean, it's it's a, definitely a dream come true when you can put on for the the team your hometown. It's yeah. just it's crazy because now you running out the stadium and now you can have thirty seats and they screaming your name, but it's a personal tie to it. So that connection is gonna be crazy for him. Man, I just I don't know if I could have handled it as a, mm. a, a twenty one year old kid coming out, but right. I mean, uh, everybody's different, especially right. nowadays. People understand the game more. People have uh, circles that can kind of hold them down, keep them focused and things like that. But then it can also be a distraction. So really, really want to see how he navigates this space of playing for the hometown team. And hopefully one of the veterans brings them in and takes them under their wing and shows them the ropes. Let me ask you this, man, as a guy, you know, a veteran guy, a guy who actually played for the coach for, for you know, for a season, what advice would you give like a, a young guy? Like you said, I mean, playing for your hometown team can be a lot of distractions. I'm yeah. sure everybody, all the family, so-called friends, everybody's going to try to just be around and want to go to all the games. So it could be a lot on the rookie yeah. who's trying to navigate and figure out the space. What advice would, would you give to Juju? Find your no person. So uh, for Explain me, it was that. my mom's like, if, if I didn't want to deal with somebody, if I don't want somebody asking me for tickets, I'll tell them, go ask my mom. And then they be like, oh, well, well, I asked you. So then it's, it's that buffer zone where it's like, you're never the bad guy. You don't really have to deal with it. And now it's, oh, well, you got to ask my mom. And then my mom will be like, hey, do you want to do this? I can tell her no. And then she can tell that person, no, we're not doing it this time. Come back at a later date. So now the, it's a, a barrier to mm -hmm. alleviate some stress. So I think as right. soon as he finds a no person, and move as far away from the side of town you from. Cause like if the easiest thing is them to have access. Once somebody got access, then you can never control when they come over, what they do, things like that. So I would say year one, limit access until you get to your feet in the ground, you get uh, some stability to you and then find a no person for sure. Find your no person, man. That, that's some that's some veteran OG game right there, man. I feel like all the rookies can really take that, whether you're whether you're you're playing for your hometown team or not. Find your no person, man. I love it, man. So, but shout out to you, Juju. Haven't had a chance to meet you yet, but we, we all Dub C family, Far East Side. So, love to hear it. A few more picks I want to talk about here in, in in this like top ten. Uh, the best running back in the draft, in my opinion, B. John Robinson going to Atlanta. Yeah. B. John, I got a chance to meet him at Fox. Uh. A couple months ago, real humble kid, great size. Like, he's bigger than me, right? Running back, as athletic. I'm talking about strong, fast, yeah. you know what I'm saying, smart. I mean, yeah. this guy, to me, there's an argument he might be the best player overall in this year's draft. Yeah. 
I like him in, in, in Atlanta. I know Atlanta's still trying to figure out some things and get some moves going, but I think that that fan base is going to love him. I like it from a business standpoint, out, off the field. You know what I'm saying? A lot of opportunity for especially black athletes and black entertainment in general. Um, how you feel about uh, about B, uh, B. John, though? Atlanta's definitely trying to – they're showing their hand. They're saying, hey, we're going to invest through the, through the draft and we go build through the draft. So getting, I, I would say, arguably the best player in the draft, uh, yeah. what, he, what can he do? So he can run block, <laughs> he can run the ball, he can catch it out the backfield, he can line up that slot. So now it's like, what position do you put him in? How do you mm. how do you stop this guy? And you got Drake London on the outside. And now you got the quarterback locked in for the next three years and being – uh, the guy from Cincinnati. Uh, so it's like, how do how do we build through the draft, and then how do we get free agents to come? And now we building this thing up, so now we're, we can play competitive football. So love that pick. Um, they really showing that they're they're pouring into the offense to help their young quarterback out, and they're gonna definitely definitely make some offensive plays. So really excited to see how they shake out this year as well. No, nah, for sure, man. You talking about Desmond Ritter out, out of Cincy, yeah, yeah. man, young guy. They also got Kyle Pitts, you know what I'm saying, who's young. So they, they got a lot of good weapons there in Atlanta. If they're able to figure it out and put it all together, man, they, they can really make some noise. So shout out to him, uh, Bijan, for getting drafted. There's one more name, though, that could have an argument for being mm. the best player in this year's draft. He kind of dropped a little bit. I might have been some off the field, like, you know, noise around him. But nevertheless, on the football field, this guy's a monster, Jalen Carter, defensive tackle from Georgia, going mm -hmm. to Philly. He's going back like he's playing along. Listen, Philly has drafted damn near the whole Georgia team. They got nothing but Georgia Bulldogs all over their squad. Yeah. And, bro, I think – you tell me if I'm wrong, bro. The the Eagles might – they might have the best D-line going into the season next year. I, I don't know. I know you playing still, so I ain't trying to be biased, but they got some dogs at, at the D-line. I think Brandon Graham is still there. Obviously, Jordan Davis, young guy who played, was his teammate at Georgia. The OG Fletcher Cox still there. If I'm not mistaken, John Sweat, I think it's still there. If I'm not mistaken, um, yeah. I mean, it, it's a, don't tell me Hassan Reddick's still there. And then it just, and then they drafted Nolan Smith later in the draft, like, and they got 70 sacks last year as a team, the most in in NFL in like I don't know how long. So they're just they're just adding on to a, a an already dominant group. They just won the Super Bowl last year. Now they're adding some like some great players. I just think that was a huge move. Nah, I definitely think uh, he was definitely the best defensive player in the draft. Uh, man, did, did some special things that some D linemen his size shouldn't be able to do. And just man. to see his motor continue to go, it's crazy. Like uh, he's one of those guys that you look forward to seeing on Sundays to see. Like man, I can't wait to see what he does when he lines up in between those lines. So Philly's definitely building something special. Like. Uh, most people know that you build through your D-line, you build through the trenches, and then you build on the uh, out outside of it, which is the wide receiver running back skill position. So they're definitely checking that box when they uh, they hit the D-line category. Yeah. They're definitely on paper. Man, they got a lot of accomplishments. It's it's crazy. So really look forward to seeing how, they, how well they play defense this year. For sure, man. As a deep tackle, man, I just love to see just great physical play. This guy, yeah. I've seen plays where he's just uses shoulder, like not even good technique, just being a monster, just throwing people off of him. So – I'm excited to see it how that turns out in Philly. Yeah. Um, and before we before we transition uh, uh, to a, another part here, got to talk about the Vikings. Obviously, you know your yeah. squad, yeah. Uh, your first pick, which I'm huge on, wide receiver out of USC, man, Jordan Addison, a yeah. beast. I mean, balled out. He's a speedster, good hands, and you're putting him next to to, to JJ. You know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying Justin Jefferson, who's arguably the best receiver in the game. How excited okay. are you just for you for your team? Your offense adding a weapon like Jordan Addison. So uh there there is a disclaimer I have to put out there. He did go to USC. Unfortunately, yeah. um I couldn't watch all of his games because of the school he went to, but hear great things. I did watch him when he went to Pitt, uh Belinikoff award winner, things like yeah. that. It's amazing what he can do with the ball in his hands and then just his separation and his routes. Uh just quick, uh beat you to the spot. Uh really excited to see what he looks like paired up with JJ. And uh you know, J.J. gets all the attention, so you can know he can come out and win Offensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year. So that's what I'm excited to see him, especially with K.O., brilliant offensive mind, just seeing how he uses him in the offense to create plays and mismatches and things like that. I think he's going to have a, a great, great first year, and it's going to turn into a great career as well. I love it, man. Big time moves by the Vikings, man, who already had a you know hell of a season last year. Again, add another explosive weapon. You know, being real, man, obviously – the defense is always going to be 
very, very important when it comes to winning playoff games, winning championships. But it, it's off as a game now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's really like that in, in any in any sport, basketball, football, soccer, whatever. So you got to have the, the more the more weapons, the better. You know what I'm saying? The more offensive guys, uh, guys who can uh, take it for 60 down the field and score, I think the better. And uh, that's a guy who's a big time playmaker. Uh, and, and you you got, you got to get the ball in his hands. I don't care if it's yeah. kickoff return, reverse, yeah. like whatever you got to do, get the ball in his hands and he's going to make something shake. So, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely love to see that, man, for sure, man. And one, one more guy that's, um, you know, I know we were talking about some of the, you know, Indy and being from Indy and, and getting yeah. drafted, things like that. Another uh, a, a, a homie from the from the city, man, my, my young big fella, Dewan Jones, went to Ben Davis but yeah. in high school, but then ended up going to Ohio State, had a hell of a career. Uh, ended up getting drafted to Cleveland, the Cleveland mm-hmm. Browns. You know, he's a, he's a big-time guy. He might be the biggest – like tackle in this draft, man. We, we thought he was gonna go probably first or second round, but you know how it is, even you know firsthand that sometimes you know the projections say one thing and then other things happen. But nevertheless, he got drafted in the, in the fourth round, going to Cleveland. Super excited for him. You know, what I'm saying to go there, learn, have an opportunity to to possibly play early as well. And uh, more than anything, I, I just want to shout out the big homie, man. You know. I, Obviously, I, I got to know him a little bit in this last year. Good, humble kid, humble, you know, humble beginnings, humble background, and uh, super excited to see another indie native yep. get drafted and make it to the league, man. I, I, it's a it's a handful of y'all in the league right now, man. That's what I'm saying. They keep sleeping on this, man. Everybody be like Florida, this California stuff. All right, come see what Indiana talking about. That's what I. That's the argument in the locker room. Like, who got the best high school football? Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead and bring y'all butts up to the Indiana and play some real football. So yeah. it's just funny to see how like. I guess St. Ignatius out of Florida, and you got uh, Don Bosco out of New Jersey, yeah. uh, De La Salle out of California. Just all these teams, it's like, oh, you got these big name programs, but what, like, what else do y'all do? You know, so it's like it's just funny when you got to compare it to Indianapolis high school football and just Indiana high school football, and people don't really think of us as a football state, which is kind of funny. But when you see, oh, like, wow, this guy is from Indiana. This guy's from Indiana. When you actually look through a roster. It's pretty cool to like, like, yeah, I'm from Indiana too. What's up? So yeah, it's a yeah. cool experience. For sure, man. We're definitely putting putting us on, putting us on the map, and showing people that hey, we're a basketball state, a football state. We're like, mm-hmm. whatever you need, man. We we just got athletes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I definitely love to see it be, being an Indy native. And uh, man, this draft just has me more excited for the, for the football season. I can't wait from a fan standpoint. Obviously, to see you going into year eight. Uh, before we close out here, man, just what are you looking for from a, a personal standpoint going into your eighth season? What are you looking to accomplish? Uh, just kind of go from there. Man, uh, looking to have a bounce back year. So these last couple of years, you know, this game is brutal. And our bodies take a big beating and mine is taking uh, a beating these last couple of years. So looking to have a bounce back year so that I'm healthy and uh, show this league, put the league back on notice about me. And uh, it's cool to see, like, how everybody, they're like, man, man, I remember when you used to do this and I used to do this. So then that kind of gives you encouragement to like, man, I got to get back there. I'm I'm close. But then you just sit, you feel all your stuff just start to click on and through things like that. You start doing the offseason program, getting the OTAs and then just kind of ride that wave through the season, going through fall camp. And then now it's like, OK, I'm back. I'm ready to put the league back on notice. So just a healthy year. Go out, ball out, have fun, win a lot of ball games and yep. hopefully contend for a Super Bowl. So, you know, that's the goal every year. But, you know, I'm looking to be one. And hopefully with the Vikings is that one host, hoisting that trophy this year. So, yes, sir, man. And, and if so, I'm going to be at the game. I think the Super Bowl's in Vegas this year. Come on now. You know how we rock. Yeah. yeah Super Bowl in yeah. Vegas. Come on, Cheryl. I'm putting yeah. all the money on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure, yeah. man. No, I love it, man. And, and again, man, this is great. Great draft. So excited for, the, for these young guys to change their lives. You know what I'm saying? So, just remember, this is only, this is only the beginning. Enjoy this moment. But again, it's time. The real work is, is starting to come now. So make sure that they're prepared to work and make sure all you guys are following the players company, not only here on caffeine, but also on Instagram, on mm-hmm. Facebook and YouTube is the players company TPC. We're going to be dropping a ton of exclusive content behind the scenes stuff from all types of sports that you would never hear. We got exclusive interviews already up right now with little Wayne, Darren Waller, TJ Hushmanzada. I mean, the list goes on and on, and you don't want to miss any of it. So make sure you are tuned in to all things Players Company. We're giving back. We're doing things in the community, financial literacy. All things athlete, man, is what the Players Company is about. So make sure you tuned in. And again, appreciate y'all for tuning in. My guy Sheldon, good drive. Good talking to you. 
and good luck this season. Yes, sir. Peace.